I'll do it from here. Angelo is going to be late. What's new? That's a good message. I was raised in a, a secular Jewish home, and even though we didn't celebrate many of our traditions, our culture was very strong. And there's a typical way that most Ashkena Ashkenazis look at the world, look at life. And it's usually, you don't trust the outsiders, and you don't trust life in general. We could never show, my mother always used to say, never get excited about anything, because something can come and take it away. And she would say, don't expect anything in life, this way you'll never be disappointed. This is an opposite message to Sukkot, completely opposite. And I could never understand that perspective, because I always thought that Look at the time you're missing, getting excited about something. And even if it doesn't happen, you still were excited about it. So it was maybe because I never knew the history of our people, except for the Holocaust. Um, I think that the attitude that I had was closer to the message of Sukkot than my mother's attitude. This year, the building of our sukkah was amazing. There was, I find every year seems to get better. There was a sense of real camaraderie between the people who were there, uh, a real pe sense of joy and peace. And, and a Sukkot miracle happened. If you look at this piece of furniture here, there's a whole story behind it. I didn't know what had happened until I got to the house, but remember Dudu Razon, he was gonna build us an ark and he had made a promise to Rabbi, and he felt terrible. Because every time he went, he told me the story, every time he went to the people where he was supposed to get the materials, who were supposed to prepare things for him, something would always go wrong. And he was so upset, he says, I'm letting down my Rabbi. And he couldn't take that. And then on the way to the Rabbi's house, he saw this, somebody had thrown this, this out. And so they went, uh, several of the men went with the truck. And it's a very long story. The rabbi can tell you what happened. It didn't end up so well. But then it ended up even better because we have men who are very persistent. So Angel emptied his, the back of his van and several of the men went and brought this here directly. And for me, it's, it's a, a, a miracle and a sign that God is showing us that something is good is going to happen, how he provides. Even in small ways, like yesterday I was making the fireplace at the rabbi's house and we didn't ha I didn't have any matches. So I asked rabbi and he, wa he went and found some matches. And this morning, Mildred came in with four packages of matches, two long ones, from the f especially for a fireplace, something that she would never have. It just shows that you just never know where things are coming from. And I, I called, again, I've been calling a few places about where we're going to go. And I, I just have this feeling that God is gonna open up something for us. I don't know what it is, but we have to have a place for that piece of furniture. Because if he brought the furniture, he'll bring the place. So the message of Sukkot is Simcha. Simcha is, me is mentioned three times. At Pesach, I think it's once. At Shavuot, it's mentioned twice. And at Sukkot, it's mentioned, Simcha means joy, three times. Rejoicing, joy, happiness. How many of us truly allow ourselves to feel joy? I'm, I was thinking of somebody that I know, I won't mention her name, but she was waiting and waiting weeks and weeks to get news from the government 
whether or not she had to pay them a large amount of money. And during the whole time, she was so stressed, she didn't know what she was going to do. Then she got the message that she didn't have to pay the money. So instead of feeling joy, immediately she started to worry about the next thing that was going to happen. Instead of spending the amount of weeks that she worried, feeling joy. Just imagine if stress does so much harm to our bodies, how much joy does good for our bodies. And God wants us to feel joy, to wake up in the morning and say, this is a new day. How are you going to use me today? What can I do today? And that joy, that has to do with trusting him. There's no other way that really that we can feel that joy other than trusting him. Our problems, our struggles, no matter what area they are in our lives, are temporary ones. I remember Rabbi said that the person who's committing suicide is taking a permanent solution for a temporary problem. Even though we say, well, joy is temporary, life is temporary, so are our problems. Our struggles are temporary. If we look back, they always seem to work out. It's amazing. So Sukkot, at Sukkah we build a temporary hut, a booth, a, a Sukkah. It's temporary. And it's showing us that all these things are temporary. But the amazing thing is that the soul, the hut represents our, our bodies, which are temporary dwellings. But the soul is permanent. Our, we are already living in eternity. Right now, we are in eternity. Our bodies may not know it, but our soul knows it. So if we really wake up every morning and realize that that's what it is, that we can wake up in the morning and give God thanks for what he's doing, go to bed at night and give God thanks for what he did to, for us during the day, then we can understand the true meaning of Sukkot, which is absolute. We have a right. We have a right to joy. That's the Sukkot message. <laughs>